How's it going everybody? Welcome back to the channel. This is Sketchmonkey here. Today we're going to talk about the Hennessy Venom F5, which is just a ridiculously crazy production car from the American company Hennessy. And for years, Hennessy has been trying to beat Bugatti and other hypercar manufacturers to claim the throne as, of course, the world's fastest production car and now with the reveal of the Venom F5 they say that they reached this goal. So in this video we're going to talk about some of the spec and tech of this insane machine right here and then go over the design of this thing and I'm going to let you know what I think about it of the front, the rear and the side view specifically if you compare it to the Venom F5 concept from 2017. There is a lot of subtle changes that's been made that makes a huge difference in the production versions compared to the concept from just three years ago. Just like the Venom GT was built on a Lotus Elise base, the F5 is built around a carbon fiber tub manufactured in the UK. And it weighs only 192 pounds. It's extremely light and a strong construction. And it really has to be because this little 192 pound carbon fiber tub houses a mid-engine 6.6 .6 liter twin turbo V8 called Fury. And it's called Fury for a good reason. It puts out a massive 1,817 horsepower and this is the most powerful engine ever to be placed in a production car. And if that wasn't enough, you also have 1,193 pound-feet of torque at your disposal if the Earth ever needed help keeping its rotation going. Now you do have some bold claims here from Hennessy, such as that the Venom is said to go from 0 to 62 miles per hour in just 2.6 seconds and reach a top speed above 311 miles per hour. You can compare that to the Bugatti Chiron, which has a 304 mile per hour limit. And this is thanks to the gearbox ratio and an additional very long seventh gear. The engine won't run out of revs until 334 miles per hour. And this is all theoretically. I can't wait to see this put into practicality and see when they do a high speed test if they actually reach these crazy numbers here. Hennessy plans on producing a couple of more cars and models after this one. However, this will be the flagship of Hennessy and none of the cars after this will have the same insane specs and power as the F5. And the whole purpose of the F5 Ven Venom F5 here is to take on companies such as Koenigsegg and Bugatti in the race to become the fastest production car in the world. And if the claims are real from Hennessy with these numbers, this will in fact be the fastest car in the world. Hennessy says that it will build only 24 Hennessy Venom F5s and each of them will cost just 2.1 million dollars. Now, we're gonna jump into Photoshop and we're gonna talk about the design of the Venom F5 here. So what I wanna do is compare the production version to the official concept of the F5 that was released just three years ago in 2017 and the subtle small differences that was made in the production version, especially here in the rear, to show you just how small subtle differences in the design can bring up the overall quality of the design itself and the, and the car. So here we here on top we have the concept from 2017. And you can see that the rear end it kind of looks like a a not finished 3D model. It doesn't have a lot of detail and there is just a, a big black mesh here that covers the rear and in this black mesh they just added the tail lights and then the pipes here with no kind of housing around the pipes themselves. Another thing that makes this look like a kit car because Usually that's kind of what happens when uh, small companies decide to build their own cars. They, they end up looking almost like kit cars and there is a re there, there's a reason for that in the design and that has to do with parallel lines com com compared to lines that are not parallel and parallel lines always ruins a design because if you have parallel lines like this it's going to make the car look static and boring because in your head, you know what where this line is going and you know where this line is going as well. And it doesn't matter how small or how short these lines are, you can you can your mind still recognizes these two as parallel lines. There is no dynamic feeling going on there. And if you put these lines onto a car or a chamfer of a car or a side view of a car, it's going to make the car look very boring and static. But what if we just decided to make one line like this 
and have the other line down here like this and then we just decide to tilt this line a little bit like this it doesn't have to be a lot but all of a sudden it gets a lot more interesting compared to this up here now we have some movement here we can see that this these two lines are actually going to intersect at a point somewhere back here if that makes sense and it just adds some more dynamic feeling to a design and that is what usually happens when car when i see car companies smaller car companies designing their first cars it lacks sort of the, a dynamic feeling on the car but i have to say hennessy did a good job here because this is their first almost manufactured car because the old one was uh, was based on the lotus elise so the the chat the, the the tub is still manufactured in uk but the rest of the body is all hennessy and i think comparing this rear end to the cool looking rear end of the production car where you can see just look at the details such as the exhausts here and how they are placed first of all up here and now you have a specific housing for the exhausts here which adds kind of resolution to the to the car itself because you have more details for chamfers and you also have a a black plastic piece on the production car that goes here now and connects the rear lights something like this as you can see down here and on top of that the biggest issue that i had with the with the concept when i first saw it was this part right here this little uh, shelf here or whatever you want to call it it feels like they didn't really know what they wanted to do with this piece and i think this v shape in the rear didn't flow well with any of the other design pieces of the car graphically it didn't flow well with the side view it didn't flow well with the rest of the graphics in the car and it just didn't look good and especially if you have the v pointing down to this piece which is the shelf which feels like a piece that they just stuck on there on the concept and didn't know what to do with and the fact that the the exhausts are pointing down to this piece gives it even more attention even though they're not probably meant for that but it looks like an arrow pointing down to this piece where nothing really goes on but look at how beautifully they solved this in the production version down here it's a solid diffuser going all the way stretching the, the full width of the of the of the car at the bottom here now and this v-shape is gone and especially the exhausts three exhausts we now have quad exhausts up here and also the mesh of the car which is a little bit more high resolution here smaller mesh in the concept which i think i prefer compared to this this looks a little bit 360p while this looks 4k but still overall the design in the back i think is the biggest change from the concept going to production you also have these rectangular ducts here that also are gone in the production and the wing itself is more integrated because it sits inside of the car it's probably retr retractable here but when it sits lower it looks solid it looks like a well-framed rear end which i'm surprised to see because as i said first first cars of small companies like this usually tend to be a little less refined when it comes to 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 design but i think venom did a good job here it's a lot better looking than for example the like and super sport the finir hypersport or the dc avanti for example just want to point on another detail here as well let's delete this layer so i can make clean for you so look at this chamfer here you can see that it has a big chamfer here and a thick v shape if we have the profile of this chamfer and this makes it look low quality it looks like it doesn't follow the diffuser at all and i know this is a concept and this is exactly what i think a concept should be when it goes to production the concept should be a low resolution the idea of a car that they want to create and then they go in and refine the details of the car not the entire proportions because we have the same proportions here as the production but the details are updated to make it look like a production car so look at how they changed this detail here as well we have now a beautiful line piece of body that goes here and follows the exact shape of the diffuser here as well kind of tucked in there instead of feeling like it's floating on top of the diffuser like you have here so now let's have a look at the front view here so the front to me it reminds me both of the uh, the mclaren p1 because if you look at the yellow here in the black it's very p1 ish 
the colors and also the if you squint your eyes it's kind of look like a p1 but then the graphics in the front it looks like a la ferrari to me which is not a bad thing i think this view down here is the best view for this car it's a very clean surface and i absolutely love these sharp fenders here and you even have if you look at this from specific angles you can see that the chamfers are even they go into a top a point at the very sharp line there which even emphasizes the sharpness of the lines even more than if you would just have a connection like this so to me this is a fantastic looking front it's very clean and there is really not a lot of changes here from the concept we do have some higher quality leds here you have a solid strip going down here which creates some sort of brand identity for Hennessy. It's hard to do because they don't really have anything to fall back on to take inspiration from older models since they've been more, more of a tuning company for, for Lotus cars, even though it's not a Lotus anymore, but it's built on Lotuses. So having brand identity from their first very own model is a big deal and I think they did great with the front view here. You can see how the, the rear part of this car also grew up with the, uh, with the production version here. Just the fitment of all these small details down here, it makes a huge difference on how they sit in the car. And another detail that I think was probably not easy to do at all, and probably had a lot of fights, designers and engineers to, to come to this solution here and to solve this problem. But look at this cut line here in this body. This is very typical for these kind of cars. If you look at Ferraris, McLaren, they all have this cut line right here. And to me, it just doesn't look good because it just crashes into this beautiful wing here that we have the carbon fiber air intake on the side there. And look at the production version. They completely got rid of this whole cut line there so this is a massive body piece now and this is partly why this car is going to cost 2.1 million dollars it's for details like that the manufacturing and the pro the, the manufacturing of all these custom 3d printed metal pieces and the carbon fiber uh, tub and all of that it builds up to be an expensive car it's just no way around it if you want to produce cars like this from a small company they need to charge a massive price for it to be even reasonable to to make these cars i just want to show you quickly the side view here as well there's really not a lot going on here that i can talk about from concept to production because most of the things happened in the front uh, front graphics and also the rear graphics specifically the rear but still you can see the cut line here as well it's completely gone which creates this beautiful massive clean body panel in the rear which i love and it's very rare to see those the lack of that little line even though it's not a big deal for a lot of people but if you look at the body panels and want clean lines it is a big deal and they probably had to work very hard in to come up with a solution where they can have this panel this panel gap removed from the side of the car other than that we have a a pillar that almost crashes very hard into the the side here but i like that it goes continues into this air intake right here so we do have some line flow going on right here and then of course you have this line continuing into the front here as well but there's not a lot of line flow going from this area into the rear the rear to me looks a little too busy for the rest of the car specifically when you compare the front view here to the rear view i think the front view is an elegant shape it looks great it's very harmonious and calm looking it's not even too aggressive even though even though it has 1800 horsepower but if you look at the rear here it becomes a little bit more messy and this actually when i first saw the rear it reminded me a lot of the rimats uh, 2 i think it's called concept 2 uh, just the graphics and the layout of the rear it's not a bad looking car and to sum everything up here i think hennessy has done a fantastic job creating the venom f5 and i can't wait to see the, the 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 proper numbers out in the real world from this car but as i said I, you know creating a car like this in a from a small team and a small company i have so much respect for anyone going on that journey to create something like this from scratch so i have massive respect for the company and for this design as well and i can't wait to see this car out on the streets or in real life at some point Thank you so much for watching. I'm the Sketch Monkey. Take care, and I will see you in the next video.